So earlier I was bringing up a, uh, some clip art that I then converted into uh, patterns. Pretty much you bring up an image, you go to or, uh, the pattern window and say capture pattern, and that's pretty much it. So here I'm working with the, the papers that I got in Painter 10, their default papers, and there's a lot of cool cellular and uh, uh, biological papers of cells and weird little brain shapes and all that cool stuff and uh, I find that the sharp chalk is best for bringing out that paper texture basically most brushes bring out the paper texture but the sharp chalk seems to do it uh, really well so uh, here I'm cleaning the edges, smoothing some edges, uh, and coming back in with the patterns. Maybe some spikes on them. Um, still a lot of experimentation. Uh, at this point, he still hasn't become the gardener. He's just kind of walking through some some vines. I think at one point I thought cool for all these vines to be growing onto him, but that kind of changed in the end. Um, so what I had to do with that, I had to reinstall Painter for some reason. It was acting weird, so I reinstalled it, and on the disc, on the Painter 10 disc, had a lot of cool extras, and I found a whole new world of really cool uh, textures and all that stuff so goes to show you, you never know what's going to happen when, uh, when something breaks down you find another way to uh, make it work out it's that old saying you know one door closes and uh, another one opens so here i've uh, started spewing all of these uh, flower patterns out of this guy's hand and then i started realizing well Maybe he's, uh, he's tending the, the garden. He's a gardener. Isn't that sweet? Um, so I thought maybe I'll put green in there because, well, plants and grass is green. But in a, in a fantasy world, it can really be whatever you want it to be. I decided to stick with the orange and using the glow brush to bring out that pattern shape. Uh, you can see that I flip the piece a lot. Uh, you always find something wrong or something interesting to look at when you flip the piece. Uh, it also keeps you from getting bored to tears with it because Looking at it the same way through the whole piece is, for me, it's just extremely boring. I have to flip literally every two minutes, if not less. Uh, it just keeps it interesting. You find new things. And so during the whole process of the piece, I don't really know exactly which way the image is going to face until pretty much the end, until I put my signature on it. Uh, here I'm putting mountains in the back. Uh, if you remember earlier, there were buildings back there, but now they're mountains. So maybe he ended up destroying the city, and <laughs> he's uh, had a change of heart, and now he's replanting, uh, trying to bring civilization back somehow. The conscience of, of a robot is an interesting concept. Uh, so here going in with the patterns um, from the Art Nouveau Dover clip art book. Uh, I found all these cool floral patterns that really lend itself to this piece. I had no idea they were going to become a part of this piece. I was mainly using them for, um, for water. I'm doing a series of paintings with um, surfing and 
been incorporating those really cool flower patterns into water. So I'll let you guys know when that comes out. But um, it was just a nice little surprise that I was able to use them here too. So I'm doing the same thing, using the pattern pen, throwing down a bunch of patterns, selecting that layer so it outlines everything in that layer. Then I hide the selection and uh, usually delete that other layer and then paint on the original layer. So it's slowly starting to come together. I'm erasing out here. What I had done was I duplicated the original layer and put a sense of atmosphere behind the character by just dragging the, the brush across the screen and uh, erasing out what I wanted to come forward. So there is a, a small sense of depth in this piece. So now it's just adding a lot of details, uh, a lot of little sharp little patterns and more glow, more attention to, to the action that's happening, the, the spewing of the, of the flowers. Adding a rim lighting from behind. I mean, there's light sources coming from all over the place in here. Again, it, it's a fantasy piece. It doesn't really need to be explained. Um, all we know is that there are lights coming from the top, which indicates, uh, well, light from the top. And there's light coming from behind him. There's light spewing out of his hand. It's light coming out of his eyes. Just lights everywhere, you know, why not? And as long as you indicate a sense of a form with the light, your piece is going to have a nice three dimensional quality to it. So now I'm just picking up little details and trying to make things not seem so blatant. And then going in with a small sized pen or airbrush or whatever and just putting in even more details. So this is the finished piece. I worked on it a little bit more since that last clip. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's mainly for this demonstration only. I can work on this piece for another couple hours just to really make it tight and uh, illustration worthy or book worthy. But uh, this was mainly to show you guys my process um, and there will be more to come. So stick around and thanks for watching and uh, take care.